This is part three of the uh, Easter final week, AD 30, starting with Sunday and going through Sunday. Uh, the triumphal entry was the uh, first event that we took a look at. And remember, there were more than 20 major prophecies fulfilled in this last week. There was more than 41 major events that occurred during this last week. Uh, most of the Gospels take at least 20% of the content to cover this last week, but John takes nearly 45% of uh, this uh, of its content to cover this last week. And so we looked at the uh, triumphal entry, and we looked at the truth that even if we don't cry out and praise him, the rocks will cry out and praise him. And then we looked at the second part, which was the cursing of the fig tree, that is the fig tree made a profession without possession. Part three, we looked at the two sons and we looked at the fact that one said he would go out and work in the field and didn't. The other one said he wouldn't go out in the field and work, but he did. And so what's really important is whether we really know Christ as Savior and whether we really are going to follow him, allow him to be Lord of our lives, or whether we just give it lip service. And today we want to take a look at the vineyard. Now remember, these are only a few events in this last week, but they're kind of key events because they, they teach some really powerful lessons. So in this story of the vineyard, we have it found in Matthew 21, verses 33 and following. And we find it also in Luke 20, verses 9 through 16. And there's some critical key features here that you want to look at. First of all, the landowner. Who is the landowner? Well, the landowner obviously represents God. Everything is his. And he leaves us as the those that are tenant farmers, if you will, to be stewards over the land. And he expects us to do what's appropriate for the land and that he should expect back a portion of what the land yields. So remember, God is the landowner. It's all his, but he's entrusted it to us. And uh, when I say that he entrusted it to us, it's important to look at the fact that he planted, he made a wine press, he made a tower. He did everything that he needed to do for us to have a successful farm. Second thing that we want to look at is the people that are involved. We, of course, are those that are landowners, and uh, then there's the slaves that are sent. And he sends not just once, but at least twice, uh, and probably three times, slaves. These represent the prophets, the prophets that came and called the people to repent, turn from their sins. And uh, the mistreatment of those slaves, Elijah, Jeremiah, all of these slaves were mistreated even though they were bringing a message from God and those are represented by the slaves that are sent and then finally in desperation he sends his son now he figures that the son will be respected and that they'll uh, treat him properly and provide that portion back to him that he should expect but we know what it says that they did with the son they killed the son well obviously the son has to represent Jesus Jesus was sent by God, his son, his only begotten son. He was not only mistreated, but he was killed uh, because they just wanted what they wanted. They wanted all of the produce of the land and didn't want to give credit to God for anything, and they had no respect for his son. Now, it's very important that we apply four critical lessons to this story of the vineyard the truth number one is it's all his we're just stewards here on earth everything that we have he's entrusted to us the second truth is that we, even when the prophets came and proclaimed a message a clear message to repent and turn away from sin and to follow God's ways we ignore them we abuse them and we don't follow them truth number three is that he sent his son that son was Jesus in John 1 1 and 1 14 it says in the beginning was the word the word was with God the word was God the word became flesh and dwelt among us that was his son and we crucified his son so we know that uh, we have three messages that God loved us enough to send his son 
but we also know that we rejected him uh, and as a result crucified him. The fourth lesson is very important about the rejection. If in fact you reject Jesus, uh, it's very, very clear from this story when the authority of God and Jesus is questioned by the scribes and the Pharisees. He asks them, he says, what would you do if your son was sent and they killed your son and just wanted it all for themselves? Of course, the answer is very clear. <laughs> they would get their due, due justice. And that's exactly what he says. If we reject his son and we have taken and only killed his son without accepting him as our Lord and Savior, then we're going to be rejected and we will perish. Now, that's a pretty important lesson, isn't it, as we approach Easter? One, it's all his. Two, he sent prophets in the past. Three, he sent his son who died for us. And four, if we reject his son, then we too will perish. Very great lesson, this little parable of the vineyard and a truth that he revealed to the scribes and the Pharisees. And it's one of the 40 or so events that occur uh, here in this last week of Jesus uh, before the uh, resurrection. And that's your thought for the day. God bless you and have a great day.